LCL Report is looking for advertisers. Do you have a product, service, candidate, or charity that would love to be spotlighted? Look at our numbers. Over a quarter million views this month. Over 700 subscribers this month. Multiple awards on YouTube. Over 500 subscribers to our Facebook group. There's pretty much nothing I won't do for a good story. If you want to know about rates, just email me. So support a business that supports liberty. Is this going to be a YouTube thing? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Hi there. Welcome to LCL Report. This is Taryn Lupo. Recently, we've been watching a lot of people standing up for their rights and filming police officers when they get pulled over. A lot of the videos I show are people that have filmed it with their cell phones. What I wanted to find out, though, is in Georgia, what are the laws surrounding if I'm allowed to film a police officer or if I'm allowed to film any public servant or anyone I want in public? So I decided to go to civil rights attorney Alan Lowe, and Alan Lowe uh, straightened out the details for me. Here's some short answers. Counselor, can you record without consent in public or private? I mean, what's the difference? Okay, well, Georgia has a statute that permits a person to record a conversation with another person without the other person's consent so long as the person who's recording is a party to the conversation. So in other words, uh, I can record a telephone conversation that I have with you without your knowledge or consent so long as I am a participant in that conversation. Now as far as videotaping, um, it is unlawful to videotape another person without that person's consent uh, from a private place. What does that mean? Well, that means that, for example, I can't come into your home and videotape you, obviously, or uh, look into your window from outside to come onto your property. Um, but the law does not address whether you can videotape someone, uh, even a police officer, in a public domain. Uh, I would argue that because the statute restricts uh, you from videotaping from a private place, that it does not restrict you from videotaping from a public place, like uh, like the streets, common areas, or even an airport. We also talked for a little while about the case of Stephen Beerfeld. Um, he was the Campaign for Liberty guy that got stopped in the airport and harassed by the TSA, and he recorded it all without the TSA's knowledge on the cell phone. I asked if you could do the same at Atlanta Hartsfeld, and after some discussion, it was the same thing. It was a public place. You don't need their consent to record the TSA, and you can even videotape them, but he did warn that you'll probably get roughed up if you tried. So, yes, you can tape it to protect your civil liberties. After some more lengthy discussion, um, he basically told me there was no, he could not find one case where someone has recorded a police officer from their car. Now, he fully expects that that is not considered a private area, that you know, you're being stopped on a public area. So he believes that you can film a police officer when you get pulled over. Speaking of recording, I wanted to ask him about the case with Sam Dodson, where he was being arrested for filming in a court without the court's permission. And I was curious if you were allowed to film in court in Georgia to see what the comparisons were. Here's his answer. Counselor Lowe, um, in Georgia, am I allowed to bring a videotape into a court and take my own trial? Okay. Um, it depends on what court. First of all, under the federal system, uh, the rule here in the Southern District of Georgia is that cameras in the courtroom are strictly prohibited, and that's by their uh, local rule. Um, on, in the state system, however, uh, cameras are permitted in the courtroom, but only with the prior consent of the trial judge, so that um, if someone wants to bring a camera 
or if the news media wants to televise a particular trial, then you must file a motion with the trial court. Uh, and there are certain um, regulations that are imposed by local rule, they're called superior court rules, uniform superior court rules, where the, um, the uh, news media is relegated to a certain area of the courtroom and of course there are uh, certain uh, rules regulating decorum, uh, it has to be quiet and uh, unobtrusive, things like that. But as far as um, the public's right to televise or to record, videotape uh, certain court proceedings, uh, in the state system it can be done, uh, but it must be done with prior, um, by filing a motion and prior consent of the trial court. If a person um, wants to challenge the constitutionality of that, they could go in and, and test those waters, but with warning, I guess, that the court necessarily won't um, respect that. Is that correct? Well, the constitutionality of regulating the... Uh... Yeah, correct. It's not really a right if you have to ask permission, I mean, to go in and, and do this. That's why I was asking if, if it could be challenged. Uh, well, I, I guess it could be challenged, but um, that would run into, it would conflict with the um, traditional right of the courts to uh, impose their own rules for the regulation of their uh, courtrooms and trials and so forth. Um, by the way, there is a local rule that says that you can't, uh, in the state court system, that says that you cannot uh, videotape the jury. Uh, other than, there is an exception that you can videotape the foreperson of the jury announcing the verdict of the jury. Um, so, to your question as to whether or not you can challenge the regulation of uh, videotaping uh, in the courtroom, you can challenge it, but I think it would be very difficult as long as the uh, regulations are reasonable for the um, fair administration of justice. So I think it would be very difficult to, to succeed as long as the rules are reasonable and they're being applied reasonably by the trial court. So that's a little more complicated and perhaps you're the type of person that would just simply challenge the constitutionality of it and uh, like Sam did and try to record anyway. I really appreciate that Mr. Lowe did this because he's not getting paid for this. He just wanted to help out the community and clarify the law. So I'm going to give him a free plug right now. He seemed like a decent fellow when I talked to him. And if you have any civil right issues that you feel like your liberties are getting trampled, contact his office. I think he would do a good job. This is part one. Part two will address the issue of do you have to show an ID if asked for one by a police officer? And also, if you get pulled over and you do, can you give consent to a search? Can you not give consent? How do they get a warrantless search? So tune in for part two, too. No, it's redundant, isn't it? Anyway, this is Darren Lupo, LZL Report, signing off as always good hunting. This edition of the LCL Report brought to you by StashYourSwag.com. This amazing ebook has over 100 secret hiding.